Quinn, let's go. Now, this was not a far drive for you, right? Yes. I, 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 I want you to know that I scheduled here for you. Because Quinn goes all over the state. You haven't seen him on TV already. He's a TV star, national TV star. And most people don't have their town halls out here, as you know, more to the east. And Quinn's mom has to get in the car and drive him to wherever, because he's 15, and drive him to wherever he needs to go. So we are here tonight for you, for your 20-minute drive. So just because you only drove 20 minutes, don't give me some lame question, okay? You still got to step up your game with a good question. So what do you got for me tonight? Well, first of all, it's kind of hard to step up your game when it's really hard to find ideas because whenever I have an idea and I mentioned this to you in July, you're literally on whatever network you're on answering it. It's getting pretty hard, but good. hopefully hopefully have a good challenge, one challenge, young man. Let's go. <laughs> challenge, all right. So you have been the race for the past three and a half months since your June 6th town hall at St. Anne's. Anselm. Um, and in order to win the primary, you need uh, some of Trump's voters. Uh, yet when you attack Trump, it's almost like NATO, NATO Article 5. An attack on one is an attack on all. Um, you know, and the divisions between yourself and MAGA are stronger now more than ever, uh, especially after your Donald Duck attack. And, you know, don't get me wrong, it was very visually uh, entertaining. But my question for you tonight is how can you win over MAGA voters? Uh, when your attacks all of you could uh, be like pushing them farther away. I've asked this question multiple times, but I really think it's the really important question. So thank you so much. Have you asked me this multiple times? Like different forms of it. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't remember that. All right. I know I saw you on TV saying that, you know, you're not going to run for office. You're going to be a journalist. Did I, did I hear that correctly? All right. Um, let me answer this to you as if you weren't a journalist. I'll treat you even better than that, okay? The truth is the most important thing when you're running for office. It just is. And you make, we all do when we run, we make strategic judgments, we calculate things to try to help our chances to improve. But if one of those calculations is, I'm not gonna tell the truth about something, because if I do, it means that I'll have less of a chance to win, then I think you need to go home. So, every word I've said about Donald Trump since the day I got into the race until tonight, I say, but I know, because I've known him for 22 years, I know it's true. And it needs to be talked about, Quinn. Because when we avoid talking about those things, we make ourselves lesser people. When we hide from the truth, or when we hide the truth from others, we don't, in my view, deserve to be leaders. I recognize that this is hard for me, believe me. I'm the one out here. You were at the one, I think, uh, that we had outside behind the VFW hall where the Trump protester was screaming at me during the entire thing. Like, it's no fun. But you know what? I don't care. And I can't care. We have someone in Donald Trump who, in my opinion, does not merit having the office of president of the United States again by his own conduct. And because I know you do your homework, you know, when I dropped out in New Hampshire eight years ago, I was the first candidate who was on that stage with him who endorsed him because I didn't want Hillary Clinton to be president of the United States. And I knew Donald Trump was going to be the nominee. I'd been on that stage. I knew no one was beating him. So I made the decision. He wasn't my first choice. I was my first choice. But I endorsed him. I shared his transition. I prepped him for the debates with Hillary Clinton. I chaired his opioid and drug abuse national commission while he was president. And I prepared him for the debates with Joe Biden in 2020. 
because I thought he'd be a better president than Joe Biden. So I'm not some never Trumper who from the beginning thought, you know, no chance he should be president. I'm not one of those people. I didn't leave him. He left me. He left me. He left me by not telling the truth. He left me about when he talked about the 2020 election. He left me when he stood there on January 6th and told those people to come march up the Capitol and then sat in the Oval Office and watched them lay waste to parts of the Capitol and sat there for hours and did nothing about it as president of the United States. He left me. So I had no intention of running again. I really didn't. But when I saw that, and then I saw the way the race was shaping up, that no one was going to say those things for the very reason you just said. They don't want to offend anybody. Well, man, you're going to be in politics. You don't want to offend anybody. Get out. Because you're going to offend if you're going to be honest. And these last two debates, while there have been some interesting moments, in my opinion, there's only been one significant one that people will remember. And that was in the first debate when they asked people to raise their hand if they were willing to support a convicted felon for president of the United States. And I didn't raise my hand and I got booed by people in that audience for it. And I don't care because I guarantee you this, if Adams and Jefferson and Washington and Franklin had known that someone would have the audacity to be indicted for federal crimes and convicted, perhaps, they would have put, after 35 years of age, a natural-born citizen in the United States as requirements for the presidency, they would have added, and not a convicted felon. But they never thought that anybody would be so self-consumed, so self-important, that they would put themselves ahead of their country and asked to be president. Now, I know all those things don't help my poll numbers with certain people. But fine, they got an option. Vote for Trump. I'm not telling you you can't. It's a free country. Vote for him if you want to. Knowing everything you know. Put him back behind the desk in the Oval Office. Knowing everything you know. Put him in charge of who's going to be in charge of our government. Knowing everything you know. Put him in charge of the strongest military the world's ever seen. It'll be your call. But what I will tell you is this, from the tactical perspective. The last poll, two polls I saw here in New Hampshire, Trump was at 34% and 38%. That means that between 62 and 66% of the Republicans in New Hampshire want somebody else. So... Let's just say I'm being tactical, which you know I'm not. But let's say I were. Do you want to fish for votes in the 38% pond, where a lot of other people are doing it, or in the 62% pond, where very few people are doing it? I'll fish in the 62% pond. Now, those people have to show up and vote. And they have to be honest, too. And they have to stand by what they believe in. And I have to make sure and I give them reasons to vote for me. But I said this to someone today who called me, uh, who was talking about supporting another candidate. It was one of the candidates who raised their hand. And this guy hates Donald Trump, this potential supporter of mine. Hates him. But said, I don't know if I can be with you. I want to be with this other person. And I said, well, you know that that other person raised their hand on the stage and said they'd support him if he was a convicted felon. I said, yeah, yeah, I know, but maybe I could overlook that. <laughs> That's the problem, man. So I'd rather go home telling the truth than to get the job by lying to you. So this is it. Maybe people won't vote for me because of it. But guess what? When I talk to people, uh, I met this woman at a restaurant in Manchester. She's like in her mid-70s. 
she came over to me and she, I was eating lunch and she said to me, can I just interrupt you for one moment? And I said, sure. And then she like leaned over like this. And she's like, get Trump. He's really bad. You're the only one doing it. Go get him. Go get him. And I said, I said to her, oh, okay, but why are you whispering? New Hampshire doesn't whisper. You better not. You are given an enormous privilege in this country. You get to go first. You go first. You are the presidential wine tasters of America.